the time now, 7.21. Just over a month ago, you may remember, the government introduced those changes to the housing benefit system. One local authority, though, is already protesting that the policy is leaving them out of pocket. Many families, you'll remember, had their benefits reduced as they were deemed to have too many rooms for their needs. One council says some are now refusing to pay the difference. Breakfast Jenny Hill has been investigating. Uh, morning again, Jenny. Just to remind us so what the government was trying to do with this. Well, the aim here is to reduce the housing benefit bill, which costs around £24 billion every year. Now, this is the spare room subsidy, dubbed the bedroom tax by its critics. What it does is cut housing benefit, which is paid to council tenants who are deemed to have simply too many bedrooms so a spare bedroom now that means that tens of thousands of social housing tenants um, are having to find somewhere between 10 and 20 pounds a week and bear in mind many of these people have no independent income so you can see why this measure is so controversial a lot of the big city councils are telling us that already um, hundreds of tenants in each area are falling into arrears as a result now many of those councils it must be said are labor run and that's the case in Leeds which is where we've been to assess the impact of the subsidy you got any washing or not that needs doing? Yes. It's their family home, and officially, it's too big. You want a cuppa? Oh, yeah. Sharon lives with her two sons in this four-bedroomed council house. The spare room now costs her £10 a week. Sharon lost her job last year. It's money she can ill afford. The money that I am using to pay the rent with is what I would normally be using to pay me debts with that I've got, because I've got a few. Um, so they're not getting paid at the moment. I think they are targeting the poorer people, yeah. This is the housing service at Leeds Council. They're busy. Postcode for the address where you were living before. More than 7,000 people here are now so-called under-occupiers. The choice? Stay and pay for the extra bedroom or move to a smaller property. Housing stock, though, is limited and already hundreds of tenants haven't paid up. We're very concerned. If we don't collect that money, we lose £4 million off our revenue account, which means we can't repair and maintain our properties as we would like. It's an awful lot of money, and we are by no means the only council. This is happening right across the country. These are family houses, built as an experiment which looks like being widely followed. Britain's housing needs have changed. These days, a quarter of a million households are in overcrowded council homes. Many more are on the waiting list. This year's estimated housing benefit bill, £24 billion. According to government figures, nearly a third of social housing tenants of working age live in a house which is simply too big for them. Now, this policy, it's claimed, is all about making better use of the existing housing stock. It's estimated it'll also save half a billion pounds every year. Steps have to be taken to get our housing benefit bill down. It has ballooned in recent years. That means building more homes is the easiest way to get that bill down. But in the short term, when you do have a precious resource, you do have a limited amount of council houses, those need to go to tenants who need the most. And paying for that has to be fair to taxpayers. But it's feared you'll see less of this as a result. The housing association building these homes must now chase tenants for the spare room subsidy. They predict lost revenue and administration costs will set them back more than a million pounds a year. My suspicion is that people will not uh, save the government money because a lot of people will move out of subsidised accommodation, social housing, if you like, into the private rented sector. They'll move into smaller homes, but actually the rents will be higher. So the costs of the government through benefits will be higher. The government's giving £150 million to councils to help people like Sharon. She's waiting to move to a smaller house. Some tenants are simply swapping properties. For now, Sharon will pay the subsidy, while her debt continues to rise. So it begs quite an important question, Jenny, is what happens at the sharp end if someone says they're not going to pay? Well, at the moment, we know that a month into this scheme or so, already we are seeing tens of thousands of people who are starting to look as though they're going to be into, into arrears. Um, are we going to see evictions? Well, yes, it's possible, although at the moment we don't actually know how a judge will react to a council approaching them and saying we'd like to throw these people out of the house. Could we see some homelessness? Possibly. Some councils, of course, are saying we want to avoid that, but it may be a problem for us. The difficulty here, though, 
is once a council moves to evict a family who aren't paying up, um, it, it has a cost. It, it costs several thousand pounds to evict somebody. Um, then, of course, there's the cost of, of housing them again. Or those tenants may end up going to the private rental sector where rents are higher and the housing benefit must still be paid. So there will be a cost involved at every stage of this. Um, it is early days, so we, we need to wait and see how it all pans out. We've only been going just over a month. Um, the government, of course, acknowledged that there will be some short-term pain in this, but already they would point to the fact that some councils are seeing evidence of people swapping houses so they are in more suitable accommodations. Uh, one of the aims here of course is making sure that people, the right tenants are in the right properties and therefore that the housing stock available to social housing tenants is used correctly. Jenny, thank you. We'll see you later. Thank you. Time now, 7.26.